Hello there, my name is John Alexis Guerra Gomez and in this short video, hopefully short, <laughs> I'm going to explain to you how to connect Node, uh, Mongo and Redis in a simple basic application. It's going to be a very simple example, nothing really fancy, but just to get you started on how to connect these three technologies. So I'm assuming that you have all of these already installed and I'm going to start from there. So what I'm going to do is just to come here into my desktop and I'm going to create like a new example, like for instance, Node, Mongo, Redis, I'm going to call it two because I already have one of those. And then on this new project, I'm just going to first initialize it as a Node project. So we all know that you can use NPM in it. The minus Y in there is just going to be answering all the questions with yes answers. <laughs> And uh, what you're going to get in there, it's basically a new file called package.json, in case you didn't know, that is going to contain information about this specific project. The next thing that I always recommend my students using is creating some ESLint configuration file. Um, basically, the, the fastest way of doing that, if you want to do it from scratch, is just running ESLint in it. I recommend you using the answering questions. You can also use other styles. This is going to help you making sure that your application is linked correctly, which will find a lot of errors for you. So it's extremely recommended. Um, I'm also using like a default that I have in here um, that basically uses um, the recommended plugins and the prettier plugin that is yet another application that is very useful for developing on um, uh, Node applications. So if you don't know how to do that, I have another video where I explain all the setup on how to get started with this. Uh, for the moment, basically what I'm going to do is just install the default ESLint, uh, ESLint config uh, prettier and prettier. And basically you can see that I'm using the save dev option in here. And what that does is that it's saying, I'm going to add this as a dependency for a development dependency for my application. So the moment that I go here into my package JSON, now you can see that I have those three dependencies, okay? So the other two dependencies that we are going to use are the Mongo and Redis. So I think for Mongo, we can just add this one. So I'm going to start here from scratch. I'm going to say node Mongo, and then you can find the default driver for Mongo is this one in here. And if you go into the quick start, they're going to recommend you how to like something very similar to what I'm doing in here, set up your backend and everything. And then just, just to install this one. Notice that I'm also going to use a minus minus save that it's for making sure that this is added as a dependency for this specific project. In the same way, I'm also going to be using like kind of, I'm not sure if it is the official, <laughs> I hope it's not the official because the documentation is quite crappy in my opinion, but I like it because it actually has promises, which is what I have been teaching my students. So it's the Redis uh, library. And all of these are like just NPM driver libraries that you can find. So basically in here, um, just install those two. And now hopefully you can see that they're added in here. Okay. So I'm going to um, start connecting first with Mongo. And the whole idea of this is I'm going to take a database that I have in Mongo, and then I'm going to try to do some things uh, on Redis to keep like a cache of that uh, database. So the very first thing that you need to make sure is that you have run Mongo running. Um, you can get that started like in, like with a, for instance, I have a script in here that I keep in my bin folder, so I don't have to remember that, but here it is for you. So you can just get it started with something like this. I'm just going to say, I'm going to start MongoD and minus minus DVPAD where you want to create like the, the data folder. And by starting that, you're going to start the server. Please remember that when you're connecting to Mongo, or Redis, or Postgres, or any of these databases, you need to have a backend service running. Sometimes when you install it, that can be a service that is running on your Windows, or a daemon that is running on a Unix machine, or Mac, or related. Okay? But make sure that that's running. Uh, one way of testing if it is running is just connecting with your Mongo shell. And if it allows you to run queries, like as you can see in here, despite like a lot of uh, warnings, then that should be fine. Like actually in this case, what I'm going to use for testing, it's this um, um, application called Mongo Compass, that it's an application that it's, it's added directly by the people from Mongo. And then what you can see in here is that it shows me all of the different libraries. So I'm not going to go into too much details of that because that is not the purpose of this video. 
uh, but I'm going to search for uh, this uh, database. This is a database that contains about 3,000 tweets that I collected for the IEEE VIS conference. In case you don't know, this is the main visualization conference um, academically, which I also help organize. And one of the things that I have created, like uh, it's, if I can find uh, uh, quickly in here, is this visualization that shows you what has, like who are the people that are worth following in the IEEE VIS community, which is the visualization community. So basically for this, what I did was to collect like around 3,000 tweets. In this case, it was only 4,000 because it was for 2021, the year of the virtual one and everything moved to uh, Discord. Like this is the 2020 where I collected 3,000 tweets. So I have those 3,000 tweets in a database in Mongo. If you want to see more examples of the visualizations I do, just go to johnguerra.to and then in here I have it in a very disorganized way, many of the projects I have created. In, okay, so coming back to this, like we have a tweet collection and then I want to use that tweet collection and then just iterate through that. So usually what you should do when you're doing this type of things is just go and take a look at the example code that they have. Actually, this seems to be like a pretty good one. Um, should we? Yeah, let's do that just completely from here. And then what I'm going to do is that I'm going to create like an index.js file and I'm just going to paste all of that. So you can see that right away when I'm hitting command J, uh, this allows me to actually um, prettier <laughs> the, the things that have been building, uh, which actually helps, I think, a lot and then keeping it clear. So uh, I'm going to put this. So actually, you know what? I think we can do that from scratch. So I'm actually, instead of doing this, because it can be too confusing just to understand all of that, uh, what I'm going to do is just build it from scratch, like using this as a reference. So remember, the very first thing that you need to do is just to import the library. We're importing like a name dependency in here. So we have the Mongo client. Then I'm going to create a function. And this function, I'm going to start like this. I'm going to say get um, connection or get tweets or something like that. Or let's start with this. And then basically the very first thing you need to do is just to create a client. And then this is going to be a new uh, Mongo client and you have to say, what is the URL that you want to connect to? Okay, so that URL, I'm going to create it here as a variable. It can be like something like uh, MongoDB, which is the, the uh, protocol, and then localhost uh, 27017, which is the default. Okay, so a trick I like telling my students is that you can use something like this. And by doing that, basically what I'm saying is check if there is a Mongo URL variable. So in case I want to connect to another database, uh, use that one. And if not, default to, to the local host. OK, uh, please remember that you shouldn't be including your uh, credentials information there, like your user and password for your Mongo library uh, uh, database, because like people could steal that. So notice also that I'm connecting to a client on the get tweets method, which you're going to see in a minute. Um, like every time you try to connect to Mongo, like I recommend just creating a new connection, which can be helpful when connecting with Express so you can make sure that the application keeps on running. So the next thing that you need to do is just to get the collection. OK, so um, like but before that, we first need to make sure that we can connect to the database. OK, and in here we actually should be checking for this thing to work okay but before that ESLint is telling me that you cannot use a wait unless you are in an asynchronous function and that is the reason why I'm putting this into a function so because this is asynchronous code um, if you don't know what the heck I'm talking about I strongly recommend you going to and searching for MDM promises and also all the materials on a synchronous code from uh, the Mozilla Developer Network, it's my go-to option for this type of things. This should help you. On a nutshell, basically what I'm trying to say in here is that this is going to be a piece of code that is it's, it's going to take to, to have to wait a little bit for getting the, the a response. So you can decide if you want to wait for it or you want to start doing other things. So that's the whole idea of a synchronous code. So in any case, like we want to put that in here just so we can, um, whenever we finish this thing, I can go and just say that I want to close my connection. 
and I should also wait for this type of things. So if you're doing that on Mongo, remember that it's very important that you wait for this type of connections because again, that it's a synchronous code. You also should include in here like a catch message um, in case like an error occurs. And then the whole idea of that, and sorry for all the noise, but San Francisco is quite noisy. Uh, you can just go and say uh, error with Mongo and for the moment, like just, just print it like that. So you should do something more advanced in there, but uh, for the moment that should do. The next thing that you do is that you should get your database and you can do that just by saying that taking my client and then I just going to say what is the type of database that I want to connect. And from there, you can go and get your collection by getting your database and saying that I want to get the collection and the name of the collection. So once again, uh, this is the name of the database. If we go to Mongo Compass, you can see it's this one in here. And then this is the name of the collection, which is this one. And you can get that in here. Okay. So once you have done that, then you have a collection and you can do something like, for instance, you can just go and say, return uh, the collection dot find. And then I'm going to run a query. In these cases, I want to get all the, the uh, elements in there. And you can do something really nasty like this. That is just to convert uh, everything to an array and then just return it. Since this is querying the database, probably we are going to need an array. And you can confirm that, for instance, in this type of thing that you're seeing in here. Um, if this is very large, this can be a little bit complicated because it, it can get like a lot of records. So we can try to see if we can do that in a different way in a second. But for the moment, like the advantage is that I can go and do something. Um, so actually I'm going to probably, because if I want to do something like this, um, I can, if I want to get the tweets, something like this, then uh, I will need an await and for that to work, I can put something like click here, like say it's run it or main or whatever. And that will have to be also an asynchronous function. <coughs> that is very important that one can get, I often get confused a lot with that. So basically by doing this, I'm saying this is going to be an asynchronous code. Uh, run that until that is running and then you can keep on doing other stuff while that is working. And then I can go and say, here are my tweets and I can say, at least like, for instance, how many tweets I got, because if I print the whole thing, um, that is going to be too much. So um, let me just run this. So I'm assuming you have node installed. So I have my application in here and now you can just go and run my index.js. And then you can see that it ran and it got 3,035 or 25, uh, 3,325 <laughs> tweets. Okay. So if you want to see what I'm saying about the synchronicity or whatever you pronounce that, uh, I'm going to put an after in here. And then just by running this in here, you can see that actually the after is running before the tweet counts. And that is because like uh, this run it is going to be running in the, in the background to, 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 to put it in a way. And then it will still process other things before that. Okay. So for the moment I have that. So good. I have now the tweets and now, Let's say that, for instance, I want to, what should I do? I want to see, <coughs> what should I do in Redis? Um, so let's take a look at the structure of our tweets, just to see um, uh, what could I do in here. Um, poo -poo -poo. Um, so for instance, I'm going to do a very simple one. I'm going just to count how many of these ones are quoted stars. Okay. So if you want to do something like that, then uh, one could say, well, now that you have it in here, like with the tweets, then you could run it directly. But uh, maybe I can um, make this a little bit better in here. So instead, or so if we go in here, uh, like for instance, in the usage examples, and then find operations, finding multiple documents. You can see that the find methods returns a cursor, which can have this next element. I wonder if I can make that work with the promise. Um, so for instance, uh, yes, 
that's interesting ah but this is oh it's going to run this uh should i do it that way uh, i'm going to defer this so i don't come uh, make it more complicated for you so for the moment what i'm going to do is that i'm going to start using the node redis application so i have this one and i have another piece of code that i can use in here and this simple one it's doing something very similar and it's just setting a specific variable. So what I'm going to say is that I was saying I want to count how many um, quote status are there. So what I'm going to do is that, like for the moment, I'm going to do it in a very ugly way. I'm going to say, I'm going to iterate over the tweets. So since this is an array, okay, I can, in the latest versions of JavaScript, I can use the off operator. Please don't confuse it with the in operator that is more common in something like Python, but it's pretty much the same thing. If you use in in JavaScript, then you're iterating over the attributes of an object, not over the elements of an array. So very important use of. And then in here, I can do something with that. So for instance, I can go and say if the tweet um, is quote status, <coughs> Then what I should do in here is that increase account on um, Redis, okay? Or the other thing I could do, uh, actually we could do, yeah, let's start with the count just uh, for the sake of it, okay? So now that I have that, then I can also go and connect uh, to, to Redis at the very least, or just to, yes. So in this case, I can go and create like a simple one. So notice that actually this version is using import, that it's a very disappointing thing of, of JavaScript is that unfortunately not everyone is following the latest standards. So this is the way of importing modules in ES6 or ECMAScript 2015. That is the latest version, but Node didn't support it until very recently. So for the moment, let me keep on going with requires. And then I'm just going to do the same thing. So notice that this one does import create client Redis from Redis. So we can do something very similar just by doing create client uh, and importing that from require Redis. <coughs> so now I have that thing and then I can go and um, I can go and create my own client, uh, which I'm going to say const uh, Redis client and actually I'm going to call this one that I'm doing using in here. Um, why are you completing like that? So I'm going to say uh, Mongo client. Okay. And then I'm going to put that in here and I'm going to create my Redis client and it's very important not to confuse the two of them. I can just put that in here. And then this is going to be the one I'm going to be using for sending messages. So I can include this way of, although I'm assuming there has to be another way of catching errors in, um, in, in Redis, in the Node Redis uh, uh, library. But for the moment, let's just stick with this. So um, basically what this one is doing is that it's saying if, if you have an error, uh, just put it in the console and saying Redis error and I can just print what is there. So it's very similar to the one I did with the try, um, but this it's using callbacks, which is kind of confusing to me given the fact that they're using promises in here that you can tell by the await that we're using in here. So this is basically just in case something fails, what we're going to do. This ESLint is warning me of an error I make. This is supposed to be a capital letter. And then uh, I can just uh, do an await on uh, Redis client dot connect, <coughs> and I'm going to put in here just console log um, Redis connected, and just to for the sake of it, I'm actually going to use the same in here that says Mongo uh, connected, and finally I just need to start running my commands in here. So in this case. I am going to be running a uh, Redis client dot um, increment. That is the one that 
basically uh, if you search for Redis increment, it's uh, like a two-way operation, or like two steps operation that is done in one step <laughs> or at once. I don't know how to explain that better. So basically it creates like Redis is a key value storage. And in this case, what it's going to do is that it's going to search if a key exists and if not, it's going to increase it. Uh, if it doesn't exist, then it's going to start it in zero. Like one of the things that has been a little bit frustrating for my students is that many of these commands are deprecated for uh, the latest versions of Redis and therefore they don't work with Node Redis without much warning. So be careful with that. In this case, I just need to say what is the one that I want to increment. So in this case, I'm just going to say um, quotes count. So just by doing something like this. And when I finish with that, and I should notice again, this should be an await uh, because that is something that is going to the database. And then I'm just going to say uh, total count is going to be an await of Redis um, client dot get of my quotes count. Okay. And once again, I am going to put this into another try to use exactly the same trick I used before. And I'm going to put all of this um, in here. Um, let me move this code back here. And then I can do like prettier help me a bit in here so now actually pretty is complaining uh, because this doesn't have anything so i should do uh, redis client and i remember um disconnect disconnecting you should do quite quit okay so it's not close for some stupid reason and then i can do that then this thing is complaining that that variable doesn't exist so i'm going to create it in here so it can actually exist outside uh, for some reason it added a semicolon in there and now this one is helping me and i can just go and put in here in the console uh, total quo count of quotes and i can go and say total count in here so hopefully that will work and then um, like the next one that I need to make sure for this to work is that I in the same way that I have Mongo running I also need to have Redis running so make sure to install it if you're using um, Mac my way of installing it what was homebrew and then uh, I like being able to store my things manually so they are not using space or like in memory and, and drive and CPU when I don't need them so in this case, I'm just starting the server, it's ready server. And uh, once again, if you don't provide any connecting information, I think it's how it works with Redis or in the client, you can provide like where you want to connect to. Okay. In this case, if you don't provide anything, it's going to hopefully to connect locally. So it's very important. You have Mongo running, you have Redis running. And now that we have the two things, we can go and just run this thing in here and it connected then it counted how many tweets there were there it did the connection to redis and then it added all of those elements and it got 494 we can confirm that this is working by just simply running a release uh, cli and then i can do a get of quotes uh, count i think it's what we call it and then you can see that that is the specific value for this or as i was recommending my students uh, there is a great application that the people from Redis, I hope, I'm not very clear in that, created that is called Redis Insight. Very cool, Insight. And then uh, you can connect. It's very similar to Mongo Atlas. Um, there still has some caveats, but you can see, like, for instance, the database in there and that it was created. So basically, that is how you can connect uh, Redis with uh, Mongo using Node. Uh, like if you need to use any other type of commands, then you can do that as well. Just make sure to use pretty much the same command. There's another caveat, and is that usually you should put everything in capital letters or like uh, whatever, like camel case, I think it's what's called. I don't know. Okay. So <clears throat> now that I have finished that, um, hopefully that was helpful and then on this second part I'm going to try to ruin my life <laughs> uh, and I'm exaggerating as usual as a good Colombian but what I'm 
trying to think in here is can I actually iterate with through this without having to use all the um, to, to return the whole thing I wonder so let me start playing with that so um, instead of running um, this like that I can let me take a, again a look at the way that they were iterating in here I uh, was expecting something different but let's see if I can work with that so they run the movie and then that returns the cursor and then the problem is that and I'm afraid ah, but let's try so I'm going to do this that should get me the cursor okay then I have the cursor in here and now that I have the cursor then um, uh, this is going to be doing a for each uh, I wonder what it will happen if I do uh, just next so <coughs> I guess I can just go and say uh, this is ugly as hell but let's try this so or actually I can go and say I wonder if this will work uh, cursor count it's different or I guess greater than zero uh, as long as we have a cursor count so I'm, this is going to be returning the cursor and basically what I'm going to do in there is that I'm just going to take um, I'm going to create my tweet as a cursor dot next that hopefully is the way that this thing works so as you remember in here they were telling, telling us that you can use either next for each or two array I don't want to have to pass a callback I want to use it directly I'm going to use the cursor count as well in here uh, although that could get me into trouble but let's see how it goes and then usually what I'm doing in here is that I'm starting as infinite loop kind of and then I'm just going to get the next tweet and everything else should be the same and the advantage of this is that I'm not loading all the, the data from Mongo directly into memory and hence I can just do that in there um, and I can also complicate the thing so on the race part in a second let me make sure do we have any more documentation in here we have the API documentation which might not be very helpful um, these are all the things uh, this is probably a TypeScript um, oh my goodness look at all that um, I just want the documentation for the cursor what would be the best way can I just search for next uh, that's not there abstract cursor aggregation cursor find cursor probably that's the one we want but I wonder how are we supposed to know that um, this is overly complicated uh, maybe I'm just too dumb uh, so basically it's saying that it's returning a promise and the returns null if no more documents are available so basically what I can do in there is that if tweet if not tweet then I can just break and then um, let's put in the console just for debugging purposes uh, what am I going to put in there um, no more tweets good so fingers crossed if this doesn't work is because you are not crossing your fingers and then I'm just going to run again my application then of course I get an error uh, tweets count red is connected uh, oh the topology is closed yes I was wondering about that um, <coughs> this was kind of my concern is that so you know what I'm going to be a little crazy here so I'm going to return the mongo client and the cursor like in two elements um, and then I'm not going to close the connection until I finish so I'm going to say in here I'm just going to take the two elements uh, hopefully this works uh, I think I might not 
understand that completely because sometimes it works for me. But the whole idea is that I'm returning two elements and I'm saving the two elements in here. Like I'm calling this function, I'm getting that in there. And then when this thing finishes, then I can go and close my uh, Mongo thing. Fingers crossed. And there we go again. Uh, cannot use a session that has ended. Uh, like who was that? Also Mongo. Well, oh, good. So total count of quotes 494. Um, who threw that error? Sessions. Uh, co -co 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 -co. Can I get more information? Oh, what is bothering you? Notes. Mongo expires session. <coughs> Interesting. Um, oh, yes. So probably, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So this might be the error. Like, remember, this is returning a promise. So I have to wait for that to finish. Hopefully, it's that. That still is telling me the same. So I'm going to do something stupid and then just avoid closing this, which I don't think is going to help. Well, that kind of helped. So, ooh, probably, yes. So let's try to put another weight in here and another weight in here. <coughs> Those two probably are promises as well. Good, good. So now it's getting that, by the way, this also shows me another error I do have in here. And it seems I'm running this multiple times. We need to make sure that this starts on zero. Um, like the first time when I'm starting like for this along, it's actually working, no problem. And then what's your problem? Um, to string, like, okay, will that work? Um, yes, it seems like it needs it as a string. And then now that I have closed that, so let me try debugging this and running that working. Yes, perfect. And then we do this. So basically, uh, the advantage of the way I'm doing things in here is that I'm actually iterating through the, the different elements in the database without actually having to, to load everything into memory. So now it's making a little bit more sense. And if you want to do um, like something else, like let me actually show you something that I found that was a little bit confusing with Redis, is that you can always, um, like in case that you want to set, for instance, um, sorted set uh, with these tweets. So we can go and do that with the, like the tweets that are quoted tweets. So I can, uh, but that will be giving too much away from the homework. Um, let me, well, let, at least like, some parts of it um, yeah whatever um, so let's say that I want to use a sorted set for storing some of these things in there okay so what should I store in there uh, so we have the is quote status so I can check when is and sorry this is going too long so you can stop watching if you're too bored if you don't want to see me failing not equal to no, will that work? So, oh, that one is false, whatever. So we have this one in here and then I have the quote status. <coughs> and then here is the quoted status. Uh, what should I do? Yeah. You forgot what I was doing in there. Uh, but yeah, let's use that one. So basically what I want to do in there is that I want to call another command from Redis. In this case, that command is just going to be um, Z at, I think it's what's called. Um, so if we go and say Redis sorted Z at, probably that's going to be my Z at. And then here comes the complications, is that you can see that ZAD is supposed to be working with key and then some options and then a score and a member. Okay, however, what we are going to find in here, it's that I'm going to say in this case, um, I'm going to be appending and then I'm going to add this to quoted statuses, status, 
or quoted tweets. And then, uh, oh, actually, this could be interesting. Uh, yeah, but I still want to show that. Um, yeah, whatever. So sorry for all the mumbling. So basically, when you use Z at, if I'm not mistaken, the format that this thing is expecting, it's a score and a value. And that it's very poorly documented. The only way I could see or learn about that is by going here into Node Redis and reading the documentation. I'm not sure if that's what they want us to do. And then I think I saw that in the client library, the commands, I think, you can see one command for <coughs> each thing. And I found these libraries just by looking at the what was being imported. This is a TypeScript. And then they have the documentation in here. And then you can see that they are expecting a key that is a string. And then you can just have a Z member or an array of Z members. And when you take a look at the C members, like in here, basically you want a score and a value. So that's how I figured that out. So let's say that, for instance, the score that you want to use for this specific thing, let's say that I want to sort it by, um, uh, what should I use? Um, when it was created, probably, uh, but I don't have that as a timestamp. So. Let's say, yeah, I think the ID should be fine. So I should use, um, so the tweet has, should have a quoted a status and that should have an ID string. And then for the value, let's say that I just want to store, um, I don't know, like, well, I can put multiple things in here. So I can say, for instance, that I want to have the text that is the tweet dot quoted status dot text. I think it's what that should be. Yes, I have a text in here. And then I don't know if I want to have anything else, like for instance, the user for that should be the tweet dot quoted status dot user dot screen name, something like this, which you can find in here. So it's the screen name. Now, before doing this, you should make sure that you have actually a tweet quoted status. If you don't have that, then you should throw an error and say like, hey, actually, and a student just was having this problem. So I can throw a new error, I think. So we can say this and make this break. Uh, could on find a um, uh, quoted status and let's print the tweet for reference so basically when we do this i'm going to be creating like these quoted tweets which is going to be a, an array um, uh, with the elements and then in here i'm just going to be appending these ones so they oh this is interesting so actually this kind of helps because if i have these multiple times then it's, it's not supposed, I, I might get less elements in here because it's a set, so it shouldn't be adding repeated elements, although I might be completely wrong. So let's try running this, and then if I run that, I get into another error, another stupid to string. Um, I wonder if I, if maybe this is being converted to a number. That doesn't seem to be the case. It's in line, uh, ready is connected. Uh, do I have more clues of what's happening? Uh, then this is actually good, but you can see me debugging. So actually this is the main clue that we have. It's in line 47, so it's definitely this one. And uh, let me just to see if I'm printing this correctly. So I'm going to create like a new object and then I'm going to put that in there. And then I'm just going to put in here, console log inserting and the new object, <coughs> just to make sure that I don't have any numbers in there. 
and then I can go and do this and it was inserting this score that looks good that one looks good so what's your problem uh, it's score as it is undefined did I miss valid or something uh, oh that like actually it will be a good idea just to add that in here and now we can see that it's complaining that it's trying to convert to a string um, I do have this element and I have this text and this user probably it's the problem that I'm sending this as an object so I'm going to use something that I don't like and it's that I'm going to try to convert this whole thing as a string so or I could just use like just to simplify things uh, I could just go and say I'm going to use the only the text uh, let's see if this one works and then if that works that's moving a little bit further couldn't find a quoted status uh, can you show me the tweet um, console log um, instead of an error and then I am going to remove this one because it's too much information and just put that and then what's your problem um, pu -pu -pu. tweet uh, could it started did I misspell that or something um, and let's say let's put that at the end uh, tweet dot quoted status and I'm going to check that uh, see if that should return true I think uh, false 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 so actually returning false so go to true and then back to false uh, so in this specific one it's saying that it doesn't have that but I do see it in there so probably it's I'm making a mistake a stupid mistake in here that I don't see if that name seems okay um, maybe this will that be it um, I'm still getting the same error why are me am I getting that error um, <coughs> and then actually let me break in here just we don't go further and I'm also going to check that this thing it's true perfect and I can do that and then it gets me the first one and have the whole tweet in there um, but it's too long of a tweet this is giving me false and oh my god what could be the stupid error here I have this oh it's inside user maybe let me try getting quoted status uh, interesting so it is actually returning that um, so it seems it's not directly in here where is that stupid quoted status um, ba -ba -ba. I should get something else but yeah the problem in here is that I'm just complicating things too much with this so like actually for the moment let me skip this and apologies for making it this so crude and then I just want to see um, what I get created in here and then if you take a look here in node redis then we can see that we have this collection and it added all of those that actually had a quoted status so I think I can live with that there seems to be like a problem in the format with Twitter so this only added the ones that actually had a quoted status so you know what uh, one way I can do this uh, 
it's just making sure that this thing exists and if I do that then this thing shouldn't come and then I can come back to the example I had before yes perfect so let me make this more drastic I can go and say the new throw the new uh, error so yeah definitely this is one of the problems with the specific data set that I'm using and uh, I can run this and if I want something more informative it could be something like this okay so now you can see that I only have 263 and then I created in Redis this structure so uh, to summarize basically what we have been uh, what you have been seeing me doing in here is just to connect Mongo and Redis and as you can see it's not that complicated the key of it is just making the connections to each one of the databases. I started with Mongo. We have this get tweets function. Remember that one of the keys that I was going in here is that I'm actually returning the whole cursor. Like if you want to do that just to, to so, so, so it actually makes a little bit more sense. Um, I can get that from here. And this get to its function is actually returning the client so I can close it outside. I'm using that in here. So I then save that variable into node and then I can use that variable and the cursor for accessing and changing things into, into Redis. And that's exactly what I'm doing in here. I'm just connecting to Redis and I'm using a couple structures. One is called or keys. Uh, one is called quotes count and the other one it's called quoted tweets okay and into uh, quotes count I'm actually uh, passing zero here and then I'm increasing that every time I see a quoted status and I'm doing that in an increase that I'm not here here it is and then I'm also just showing you how you can use the app. remember that the structure of your attribute like just needs to be score and value where the value is a string that's why i was getting all of this so for instance if i want to simplify this i can just leave it as it's quoted status dot text for instance and in that case the set is only going to contain the string the id and the text and that should work as well and you can see the difference in here by saying this is the member it's actually a json object which but i could just go and say no, I want it to be like only the text. So if I refresh this, now you can see the actual text, which actually got weird in here. But let me delete probably this element. There we go. And then run that again. It should be only text. Um, I can refresh that here, here. Yes, so pretty much all text as you can see in there. So that is a way that you can connect the two things. Hopefully that's helpful. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Hope that helps.